We seem to be living in a time when religious cults are spreading all across the country. A particularly colorful group, often seen dancing and chanting in the streets of the major cities of this country, New York and Chicago and Detroit and Pittsburgh, is called the Hare Krishna movement. Because their names are extremely difficult to pronounce, I'm going to ask my guests to introduce themselves. What is your name? My name is Rupananda. Anuga means follower, and Rupa Goswami is a great acharya or spiritual teacher in our line. So it means I follow Rupa Goswami. Right. And yes, ma'am. My name is Kalindi. It's one of Krishna's favorite rivers. Right. My name is Yogeshwara Das. That means I'm a servant of Krishna, who is a master of all mystic powers. My name is Bharadraj Das. That is another name of the Supreme Lord and I'm his servant. My name is Rukmini. <coughs> a little louder. Rukmini. Rukmini. And she is, um, I'm servant of Krishna's wife, Rukmini. The servant of Krishna's wife, okay. And my name is Mangal Maya Das. And Mangal Maya means full of auspiciousness. 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 Right. My name is Jaya Dvaita Das. Jaya means victory. Now Dvaita means the devotee who requested the Supreme Lord to come to this world and spread this chant. Uh, right. right. My name is Satsvarupa Das. That means God has an eternal form that doesn't die, and I'm his servant. Right. My name is Yogamaya Dasi. Uh, Yogamaya is the internal potency of Krishna. Krishna has different energies. The external potency is uh, this, the inferior energy, and the internal is the superior energy. That's Yogamaya. And I'm the servant of this, of this potency. Of this You're the servant of this potency. Well, yes, it's, um, Krishna displays himself in different energies, and everything on the absolute platform is equal. It's all, it's all absolute, and it's all actually spiritual. So this is one of, this is his spiritual energy, Yogamaya. Yes, sir. My name is Bhagavan Das. Bhagavan refers to the fact that God is full of opulence, and Das means servant. You're a servant of opulence. Servant of one who possesses all of you. Right. Now, what, what instrument do you have there, and for what purpose? This is called harmonium. Right. And this instrument is used in kirtan. Kirtan means joyous singing to glorify the Lord. Right. Let's see what that's like. <laughs>
be back in one minute. What is your movement uh, all about? Uh, are you American? Yes. Are you? you were born here in the United States. And you had another religion. Not once. all of us were born here in the United States, but most of us. You were Catholic or Protestant? Yes. Or and what made you uh, disillusioned about that religion? And what made you come to Krishna? Because Krishna gives us a, a taste that satisfies us. It makes us happy chanting Hare Krishna. But uh, what does it do in... Uh, productive terms. I mean, you sing and dance in the streets. To what purpose? To inform people, to remind people about the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna. In this age, uh, everyone is forgetful of God. It's a godless age. And people come into the material world in the first place to forget God. But shouldn't you serve God by uh, functioning, by growing crops, by doing doing something purposeful? Well, the, the, main, the main thing... God mean you to sing But we are doing street? something. There are the, root, crops. <laughs> the root of all problems... The root of all problems, uh, the lack of foodstuff, the war and the strife and the hypocrisy that exists in the world today is a lack of God consciousness. So simply if you um, cure the disease in Biafra, then you have a Pakistan. After right. you have a Pakistan, you have something else. So therefore there's no cure, no material <coughs> cure to the problem. What the do you cure is spiritual. What do you stand for? I know you don't, uh, you don't eat meat. Fish, eggs. You don't gamble. You don't believe in sex, except on a very limited basis. You don't believe in uh, intoxicants. You don't take tea or drugs or coffee. <coughs> what does that add up to? Um, what what purposeful, what, what thing do you it produce? Purifies or, us. Huh? It purifies us. You, but now you're purified for what purpose? To, to love to God. Preach. To love God. To love Krishna. Because Krishna is the supreme, supreme pure. Couldn't you love God as a Catholic or, or a Protestant? Yes, you? you can. But why didn't you do it in those terms? I don't know. But Krishna has come, and this message of Krishna has come, and this movement has come so pure that it is changing the faces of all the youth all over well, the world. Well, how did Krishna's message come to you? You right. bought a book? A spiritual master. No, you were. What, what were you doing when Krishna came to you? I was playing harmonica in a, in a blues band. <laughs> <laughs> And one night you were playing, and where did Krishna uh, appear? I was playing in an opening of a temple, because I wanted to do some good. We were doing everything for nothing. And so by chance I happened to play uh, uh, for an opening of the temple in Montreal. A Jewish temple? No, Radha Krishna temple. <laughs> Radha Krishna. Universal temple, the temple of love of God. They needed some money in order to help. At that time you were going. a Protestant? No. What were you? Atheist? Yeah. Atheist. Right. And so I played, and they were chanting. They, were, they said, let's chant. And so the we way chanted. they chanted now? Just now. They Something chanted. about that chant enlisted you? <clears throat> I didn't know at the time, but it stayed with me for two years. Why? I watched it, and it seemed like <clears throat> another form of revivalism or something. Well, we are revivalists. <clears throat> Yes, that's, that's a correct description, but it doesn't, it's not limited in its uh, definition. Uh, when we chant Hare Krishna, this is not any kind of an artificial imposition on anyone. Uh, by nature, we are all spiritual living beings, but because we come in contact with material nature, therefore this original consciousness is covered, and as a result, we're constantly engaged in waging a hard struggle for existence against this material nature. But that original dormant Krishna or God consciousness can be revived by this chanting of Hare Krishna. This Why? is the recommended How? means. This chanting is spiritual sound, and because we're spiritual beings, it's attractive to our soul as well as to our ear. When we hear mundane sound vibrations, our ears pick it up, and it sounds pleasant or unpleasant. Do you um, feel euphoria? Oh, yes. It's called transcendental bliss or transcendental ecstasy. Were you in bliss? I was watching you. Yes. This is a much higher, <laughs> a much higher ecstasy than any material pleasure that you can experience because it's ever-increasing. 
it gets nicer all the time. As you chant Hare Krishna, uh, the more you chant, the more you want to chant. It's well, why is that ecstasy producing? Because you're being put in direct association with God. Uh, God is actually present in his name. He, God incarnates in many, many different forms, millions of different forms. And this is the sound incarnation of God. God invests all of his energies in his name. He's non-different from his name. If uh, we have names, uh, you're David. Uh, if I call you David, you're different. Your body is different from David. The person, you're different from your name, but God is not different from his name. Uh, and he's not in person. We don't call him just God. We call him by his name, just as we don't call you man. Uh, we call you David Suskind or Mr. Suskind. So we call God Krishna because that's his name. That's one of his names. Yeah, yeah, people ecstasy. have called him uh, Jesus. People have called him Buddha. People have called him Mohammed. Yes, These yes. are incarnations. Are you, are, are We're saying that people should call him. <laughs> he has millions of names. <laughs> but why couldn't you call him through the religions of your birth? You can. But you didn't. Right, because no one's teaching us to do that. Didn't your father and mother teach you? No. Your priest? No. No. Well, we're preaching that. We say... Well, how did you come to it? So we, you before, once had... I can explain it to you. Like right, everyone else. right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why when we speak, we always um, offer respects to our spiritual master. Um, because um, originally, we're in the darkness of ignorance, and he comes with the torchlight of knowledge and opens our eyes. We're Eat thinking, Krishna. our spiritual master. Our spiritual master means the person who's a representative of Krishna, who comes and preaches the message of Krishna. Where did you meet him? In New York City. Where? Well, uh, at the temple there. I came to the temple. First I bought, we have many records, and I heard a record by our spiritual master. And I would, I would just chant. I was working for my father in a store, and I'd uh, push boxes around and chant Hare Krishna. And, uh, <laughs> he must have been very upset. <laughs> no, uh, no, because I was working nicely. Did he know what you were doing? Uh, no. Because even I didn't know what I was doing. Did but you I was say, what chanting. are you doing, son? You're, 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 you're singing strange... No, no, I just, I, I just chant softly to myself. Did you cut your hair? No. Did you paint your... No. <laughs> that was later. Later. Because by chanting, uh, of course, later I gave up working, and so many things happened. Uh, How do you eat? Excuse me, now? Yeah. Well, we eat at our temple, we offer all our food to Krishna, and then we take the remnants. We collect donations well, you, from people. Any of you work? Uh, some of us, yes. Uh, we have people who are accountants, we have people who are uh, electrical engineers. You go to work with this costume? No, 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 no. Most of us are not. We don't go to work. We go out chanting, and we go out preaching to people. But please, uh, don't forget God. Remember your relationship with God. Uh, chant the name of God. That's an important part of the social body. Just like you have a body, there's also a social body. The head of that body is considered the priestly class of people who instruct the others about offering everything back to God. That's the basic prim principle of one who is spiritual. He understands nothing is his. As soon as you claim something is yours, whether it's your watch, or what your shoes, your wife? or your wife, your wife is or your yours. child, it is Krishna's. I am Krishna's and you are Krishna's. Is your wife your wife? My wife is Krishna's. Is your child yours? Everything belongs to God. You can't substantiate your claim. Well, then what is your relationship to your wife and child? We're all serving Krishna. What does it's that one mean? Of love. It's one of love, but that love is not ill-founded. Krishna is at the center, therefore that love endures. I think if you look at the statistics, you'll find that today most relationships terminate rather quickly. And even if they're prolonged, at most they can last till the end of one lifetime. Actually, love is based on the spirit soul. When someone's lying dead, his mother's crying over him, John is gone, John is gone, my boy is gone. So that means she's loving the spirit. The so body's still there, but John is gone. So in our family's well, in you the marry, yeah. you, you do marry, married. so you, you, you two are married. We are married. Right, so you did take one to the other. You did have a... But in Krishna consciousness... What does that mean? That means that um, we married in order to um, better facilitate our serving Krishna. That is in everyone's interest. Did you date before you married? No. no, we met in the temple. Well, does one uh, go on a date? You know date. Did you uh, go to a movie? Did you... Uh, did we you have movies made by devotees about our spiritual master. Did you hold hands? No, it wasn't necessary. The idea is... We desire to... We, we know what our responsibilities are, you see. No, but, but before, how did you know you should marry? Before we into this, into this marriage, this marriage is not, ba is not based. Did somebody ordain the marriage? Yes, our spiritual master. 
Who is your spiritual master? His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Oh. The founder of this movement. This chap, uh, and this holiness uh, ordained your marriage. He called you and said, I want you to marry this woman. Well, <laughs> well he said it would be a perfect marriage. How did he know? <laughs> Had you ever met? Yes. We met just, just a little while before we met. Do you go through any... Um, courtship? <laughs> courtship, yes, thank you. No. 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 He said marry, so you married. Well, more or less. No one is forced to marry. You could you have said no? We could have said no. We right. accept but we had some desire to, to be married. We accept so I think what we're trying to get at is this that the marriages that take place in Krishna consciousness aren't based on one's attraction for the other in terms of common interest or sex life or something like that. Of course, you read the same be? books. Well, if you want it to be a short relationship, that's fine. If, they Krishna will, if consciousness, that's the case, they'll be temporary, but actually... Uh, everyone, Why will they be eternal? Well, we're all eternal as it is. You see, we all are eternal living beings, spirit souls. These are simply temporary bodies. So we don't marry for some temporary bodily relationship. We married to help each other become more uh, Krishna conscious, more consciousness, have more consciousness of God. And then when the body drops, that's just the beginning, actually, because we can change these bodies into another material body. We can take a spiritual body. It's not difficult. It if depends you really on what we want. You'll help find you out will have a child when he uh, bids you to? Well, Yoga Swar made a very nice point just now, that if you really love someone, then you'll help them um, become really happy and find out who they are. Just like you asked at the beginning, well, what do your parents think of this? Well, my parents um, say they love me. So because they see that I'm becoming very happy, then they're very pleased. Because they know that um, previously. But could this be uh, another phase that you're in? It could child. be, but we've all, just like Rupanuga Prabhu has been chanting Hare Krishna for over four years. I've been chanting for three and a half years. So many devotees here for such a long time. And we're feeling, rather than a decrease, rather than some stagnation, we're feeling ever-increasing transcendental bliss. Ever-increasing bliss. Please Child don't take us as a, as a sect. Uh, this, is, uh, this applies to everyone, these things we're talking about. that uh, We're going... Uh, Why do you paint this thing on the front? Because it's Marxist as devotees of Krishna. The whole thing is to remind our uh, brothers and sisters, just as you are a brother, Brotherly love is based uh, on the fact that God is our Father. We want to remind everyone of the relationship to the one God. So we are preachers. This, this dress, this marking, uh, is all to remind you, oh, there goes a Krishna person. And then he has to think of his own relationship to Krishna or God. What is the tuft of the hair? Could you, uh, each of you has a little... Yes, uh, this is called the Sika. Uh, this is done for the pleasure of our spiritual master. It's the same thing. Spiritual markings to, to make one... Uh, Make one understand that here's a devotee and I can ask him about my relationship to God. Because uh, when one dresses like this, it means that uh, 24 hours he's uh, serving Krishna and trying to spread this very but nice Aren't you over dressing uh, to explain <laughs> yourselves to God? I mean, you, with, the, with the little thing of hair and the paint down the front. God, no, he knows <coughs> very well, but... But uh, doesn't the average civilian walking down the street reading the Daily News? Or he doesn't know about Chicago Krishna. Tribune? What does he see in the Chicago Tribune? Uh, birth, death, disease, old age. Then he looks up and he sees a devotee, and there is Krishna. <laughs> it's quite a sight. Uh, uh, we'll be back in a minute. This, uh, this is the food. This is the food of uh, Hare Krishna. What is it? <coughs> different things. This is um, different preparations that we prepare at our temple, offered to Krishna. This is called papadums. And these are simply wonderful, named by our spiritual master. <laughs> he, said, he said, you eat them and you will become wonderful. <laughs> and um, this is a vegetable called upma. Why don't you try some? It's very delicious. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. Poor is nice. That's lovely. Yeah. Take something up. I won't overdo it. Is this a simply <laughs> one? <laughs> <laughs> you eat this stuff all the time. On Sunday we have a special feast at our center. In every city all over the world, there's a beautiful 
um, love feast, yeah. it's called, and we distribute this for Shadam. This is what you'd have on a wedding feast or something? Yeah, Sunday we're having a beautiful wedding. and um, Maybe you can come. We'll have we're a lovely have feast a like Oh, I'd love to, but I have a previous booking. <laughs> All right. Tell me, uh, how do you live? What's your day like? When do you get up in the morning? Very early, because we get up. I get up at 3 in the morning. Why? Different people, different times. But that's our spiritual masters instructed us, Srila Prabhupada, um, that that's the best time for self-realization. 3 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Actually, happiness is to be awake. <laughs> you know, it's just like if you're, if you're you asleep, alarm, you're missing, you you're missing out on so many things. How do you get up at three? Does your body wake up? Yes, God's body can be night. adjusted. <laughs> practice, right. just practice. It's simply wonderful. It's, uh, simply wonderful. <laughs> uh, you get up at three o'clock in the morning, right, and the whole city's dark. What do you do? We chant. We chant Hare Krishna. You, at three o'clock in the morning, you yes. chant? Well, first we bathe, and then we chant. We go to the temple immediately. You bathe first. We bathe first. We How many times a day do you bathe? Twice a day. Twice. It's a sort of a cleaning fetish. Well, cleanliness is next to godliness. <laughs> All right, you leave yourself open for those. And then you uh, <laughs> you get up and you take a bath, and then you uh, eat some of this, do you? Well, after a while, but we have a very beautiful program at each of our temples. Um, you go to the temple right away? Yeah, we have a, um, a ceremony called Archit which is worshiping the Lord. Artric means to receive the Lord. Uh, so we all chant at this Archi ceremony and play nice instruments like this harmonium, a drum the drums you saw, and nice kartals. It's very beautiful, very early in the morning. And we study, we study. We have very nice books, literatures, the Krishna book, the Srimad Bhagavatam. We study the pastimes of God. This is a specific contribution of our movement that we are explaining to the world what God looks like, what he is doing, who his associates are. His what does he look everything. like? What does oh. God look like? <laughs> Behind he's, me. He's lakes and ducks and... Uh, right. That's the spiritual world. We have descriptions in our literature of the spiritual world. Right. And who are his associates? Animals and flowers? All those pure devotees. Yeah, all those pure devotees. All those pure, he has a, mm, a family. You see, everything in this material world is a reflection of the spiritual world. The Supreme Personality of God it has a mother, a father, he has a brother, he has friends, servants. Everything that we see here is simply a reflection of that. It's temporary. That's why the love in this material world is temporary. Actual love means without end, continuous. Why, why do you have to get up at, at 3 in the morning well, those to do hours, your devotions? Those hours are called uh, the most auspicious hours of the day. You know, the best and uh, uh, hours and the most conducive for a spiritual uh, realization. What so time do you go to sleep? 9.30. 9.30 at night. Yes. We don't even like to go to sleep. Two of the greatest spiritual masters in our line used to forget to go to sleep. They were so much in love with Krishna. They forget to eat sometimes. We're so busy in the material world trying to sleep. We think sleep is recreation, but we think sleeping is death. We want to be awake, wide awake, and conscious of Krishna all the time. Therefore, there's chanting in the street. People are asleep. We're trying to wake them up. When you, uh, you don't eat... Take some more. No, no. <laughs> no. I mean, it's delicious, but I, uh, I'm full, I think. Uh, that threw me for a minute. Oh, <laughs> what do you, uh, you don't eat meat. No. You're vegetarians. Only vegetable foodstuffs. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, offer me uh, a leaf, some fruit, uh, some water. Uh, and he but says, you also don't have fish. No, no fish either. It's also Be meat. And Krishna says, if you offer the, these uh, foodstuffs to me with love, he says, I will accept it. And so that's why this foodstuff is called prasadam. And prasadam means mercy of the Lord. Because Krishna says, anyone who... Uh, who uh, eats something without offering it to me first, that person is a thief. So we offer the food to Krishna first, and then he takes. Not that he needs it, but we offer it to him with love. And then we take the remnants. And that is right. called well, you also have Lord. no stimulants or intoxicants. No, right? if you're chanting Hare Krishna, that's the highest. That's the highest type of intoxicant, love of God. Yeah, well, forget whiskey and all that, but what about tea and coffee? That's also in fact a little quick, uh, you know, pick me up. What's the value? <laughs> Would you have a Coca Cola? No. What's the, how does it add to our God consciousness? That's our criteria for doing anything. Uh, Chanting Hare Krishna adds to your God want consciousness. Why do you Coke if you have such nice, simply wonderful? You know, you don't even desire it. That's that's the philosophy that by experiencing a higher taste, you forget about the lower taste. So we've all given up smoking cigarettes, um, so many things, because we're tasting something sweeter. We're it's not renunciates. We're not we're not giving up the world. We're not ascetics. <laughs> We simply are developing a higher taste, so we can give up these things. You see, if I say to you, stop smoking, uh, David, now you stop. All right. And you say, all right, uh, no, I'll, I'll stop smoking today. 
and never again. But what's going to happen within a week or two, you'll just maybe change your brand, but you'll be smoking. But if you develop a higher taste, you have no desire to smoke. See, we have no desire to eat meat. We have no desire to smoke cigarettes. We have no desire for these things. Because you have any desires? Yes. Yeah. Our desires are always fulfilled. Because our desires are fulfilled by Krishna directly, not indirectly. We don't want to have indirect relationship with God. We want to be fully uh, conscious of God. And did, did God in any way say, don't eat uh, fish or don't eat uh, meat? Or? It's there in Jesus the Christ said, thou shalt not kill. That was one he of his commandments. But uh, we, have said, we, he, we have said, uh, we shouldn't kill people. But why should we kill animals? How can you have fruits like and vegetables? If you have a nice plate like this and a cow here, what would you do? Would you kill the cow or would you oh, eat that food? I'd go right for the cow. <laughs> for the milk. I mean, food. <laughs> we don't have to kill the cow to take the milk. Why cause the animal pain? Why? Do you have to chop a tree down to get the apple? No. You can take the fruit that God is providing. He's providing this light, even. He's providing everything. But we're taking... No, that's uh, consolidated at this moment. Where did they get the it? Sun. <laughs> it's coming from the sun. The sun's coming from Krishna. It's all coming from Krishna. Everything is emanating from Krishna. So all we're doing, we're, one little trick we've learned to be happy, that we accept, joyfully we accept, because it's Krishna's mercy. But we give back, because it's his. There's a very interesting example that you get, just gave when you said that this slide is coming from Con Edison. That's the point of this movement, to change the vision which people have from one of material consciousness or consciousness of simply what their senses are dictating to them to one which is uh, tempered by knowledge coming down through the line of teachers of spiritual masters. What is material knowledge? We say we know what the sun is made of, right, David? Right here on this earth planet, there's all the ingredients for the sun, right? So why don't we make one, a little tiny one, just to float <laughs> over the, the New York area and light up the night? Because we don't really, we're Would blessed. that uh, dish uh, of uh, foodstuffs, <laughs> would that, would that, that would be... you. <laughs> because you are what you eat. You are what you eat, I've Certainly. heard that, yeah. So this is spiritual foodstuffs, so similarly by uh, taking spiritual foodstuffs. Would that be a typical uh, dinner? On Sunday. On, right? on Sunday. Sunday. Because we'll during the week, Sunday. we eat very simply. That's a feast? Yes, isn't it? <laughs> Take some vegetables, Fred. No, no. We'll be back. We'll be back in a minute. contain your ecstasy for a minute or two. I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Do you live in a, what would probably be described to the rest of us as a commune? Yes, um, ashram. Ashram means it's a center for spiritual life. But it's a communal... It depends what you mean. If I you all live together. Yes. We have about 120 living there now. In, under any other conditions, if you took people who didn't know each other from all different backgrounds and put them in this one big place, you'd have chaos. But we have a very nicely organized, well-run wonderful community where is everyone it, gets along because it's God-centered. Is it run democratically? Do you vote on things? No, it's all voluntary. <laughs> all voluntary. Yeah. But right. there's authority. The authority is coming from our spiritual master. Right. But is there a leader of the group and a sub-leader and yes. a deputy? You, know, so president of the temple. you are president of the temple. What you say goes. Well, you say I, you do the dishes, you clean up, you... Uh, yes, for organizational purposes, we have leaders like that. Right. Here's the thing. Commune. Now, when you say commune, you mean a convenient social arrangement for everyone's gratification of their temporary senses, of their body. I didn't think I meant that. Well, <laughs> I guess you're You know, when, right. you talk, like, when you talk about the hippie communes or right. the hate street, that's what we mean. You're a structured commune. Well, yeah, our, and our structure, here's the thing. The, the center of our, of our commune is Krishna. Right. And the order is of Krishna. Krishna says, offer me a leaf, flower. We're doing it. He tells us who right. cooks it, but we do it according to what Krishna says, and we offer it to Krishna. If the whole world could live like this, then there would be peace. And now, be does prosperity. Krishna dictate the cutting of the hair this way? Yes. The painting on the face, yes. but it's the not parts for of the body. It's not for everyone to understand. No. It's not that we're proposing that, that every man shave his head, that every man not work at a job, but simply the Krishna consciousness should be added. The consciousness that, um, 
Everything is coming from Krishna, so everything should be used for Krishna. Where do you get the money to pay the food bill? Of this? Krishna, Krishna, he sends money. Yes, Krishna sent us a nice incense business. <laughs> Krishna sent incense. You burn incense and sell it? Yes, okay. I see. Now, marriages and arrangements, you order those? You're the, the, ba the basic principle is, is compatibility. You ordered uh, these two to be married? No, no but, uh, but you see, when uh, two devotees desire to get married, the desire to get married is based on uh, their vision. They see each other as fellow servants, not as simple, simply sense objects for each other, but as fellow servants. And if they desire to get married, they ask permission, and then there's a discussion as to why, to make sure everyone understands why. Who do they why. ask permission of you? They ask permission from our spiritual master. Who is that? Sure, the Prabhupada, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. He's aware in Brooklyn? No, right now he's in India after traveling around the world again. How do you get word to him that you'd like to get married? By, by mail. By mail. He writes back okay? Yes. Right. He was in Brooklyn uh, just a few months ago. And they, nice did you see him? Yes. And he said, uh, fine, you're made for each other? We've been married a few years. Right. Well, did he approve of you two? Yes. Right. Then, then what is the uh, procedure? Do you have to talk to your mother and father? Do you, what about your parents? Do you see them? They're invited to the wedding. <laughs> they're given nice garlands. They're given nice garlands. That one. That garland there. That's a garland. Yes. Right. My parents came up watching the show. Now, you uh, say I want to get married. He says, oh, okay. Then, um, under what circumstances would he say no? Well, uh, he, he doesn't say no. He says. Uh, if you have discussed it nicely and understand why you're getting married, what the purpose of married life is, not simply to raise children in ignorance of the Lord, if you understand what, what married life means, then you may get married, but with understanding. A child in Krishna consciousness is raised, is given knowledge, both materially and spiritually. Are you married? Yes, I am. I'm married to Rupanita. Right, and you, you got permission from the leader? To, to we were married I, before we came to Krishna consciousness. Oh, I see. You can be married and come to the movement. Oh, certainly. Well, the movement's only five years old in the United States, so we were all doing a lot of things before. Right. Now, you can't uh, court in the traditional way. You can't go to a movie or a dance. We have time. You, have time. <laughs> you, do. you can do whatever you want to do. That's, the, no that's the principle of the soul. In this process. You can chant Hare Krishna when you go home tonight. <laughs> Who can? You can. Everybody. <laughs> oh. Can you... Uh, you. <laughs> Can you touch? Can you dance? Can you kiss? Can you do any of those things? We dance, but this dancing is different from that. Yes, dance. it's a solo dancing. <laughs> no, we're all we're dancing together. We're dancing with Krishna. Real dancing. We're dancing with Krishna. We dance with Krishna. People, some people are dancing with uh, Maya or illusion. And some people are dancing with Krishna. We are dancing with Krishna. Not with her. Mm -hmm. No. Well, we're dancing alongside with her, but we're both dancing with Krishna. And you have to examine what's the result of that dancing. We dance for the pleasure of the Lord, not for our own pleasure. Everyone wants to dance you with do beautiful girls. Your own pleasure? Don't no, we chat. Not, that's not our motivation. <laughs> uh, the result is that we we receive pleasure by pleasing God. You are automatically pleased. You enjoy along with Him, just like the servant of uh, of a very wealthy millionaire. Uh, he lives almost as nicely as the, as the millionaire. He's got his own nice quarters in the house. So if we're serving this, uh, the Supreme Lord, we enjoy along with him. But first we must please his senses because he's the Supreme Person. I did uh, that research about your movement, and it says that after you've got permission to marry, you do in fact marry, and there's a kind of lovely ceremony that goes on. Yeah. Then um, you don't need permission to have children, but your sexual activities are preordained by this Krishna. No, family planning. So we plan <laughs> to have children, not to avoid having children. We want to have children so that we can raise them in Krishna's service. But when you have children, you have to precede it by five hours of chanting? Uh, We're always chanting. We're always chanting. We'd like today, we preceded by several hours of chanting before we came here. But a man and woman that says, I'd like to give birth to a child. I'd like to create a, a family. And you want to create the best child. You have five hours of conditioning. Because, just like if you examine it medically. But couldn't you lose the, the idea? Yeah. No, because the idea, <laughs> what's the idea? Krishna. The idea is so that you don't lose the idea. The idea is to serve Krishna. By chanting, but let's serve five hours of singing. Not singing, on, on beads. You can chant any, there are no hard and fast rules for chanting. But at the end of, by chanting for that time, what are you thinking of? Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. Shouldn't you be thinking of Miriam, Miriam, Miriam? No. no. Chanting is a labor. 
Not that chant. Does Miriam or Martha ever take over from Krishna? Wait, wait, you want to talk about Miriam for a second? Everybody in the world, <laughs> everybody in the world is very much after sex life because sex life is the highest pleasure in the material. Well, it's a contender. Well, well, until we get too old, but it's a very, it's a very nice place. <laughs> now, the thing is that everyone's got plenty of that. Everybody has plenty of sex life, yet no one's happy. Wait a minute, you can't make categorical. Uh, what are? Like then that. what is happiness? What do you mean, no one's? What happy? is happiness? <laughs> happiness is a condition of uh, no condition. fulfillment or self-realization yeah. or pleasure. A feeling of um, that never ends. Happiness, ec ecstasy. <laughs> so no, come down. Oh, sure, you come down. Oh no, that's not happiness. That happiness. Is not <laughs> that happiness. <laughs> that's <laughs> no, that's because there's a different high. We're talking about a spiritual high. You should stay high forever, but you just must chant. Now, if we stop chanting, we would come back down to the material platform. But we don't because we've learned the secret. So we keep chanting, 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 chanting all the time. Does your wife never say, knock off the chanting and, and love me? <laughs> she I, says, uh, chant if you love me. <laughs> chant if you love me. Right. Is there a limit on the family that you can have? Can you have as many children? The limit is that no one should have a child unless he can raise the child to be free from death. We're all heading for death, maybe in a moment or maybe 10 years. But if you can raise your children and yourself, become free of death, this is actually possible by love of God. It's when your parents uh, see you, do they see you? Do you maintain yeah. contact with your family? Sure. Yeah, as a matter of fact, about two weeks ago, my parents came down from Washington, D.C. Uh, when I got married, and they were very pleased, and they liked it very much. So folks came up from Washington sure. and saw you uh, in that gear yes. and said, terrific, Tom? Huh? Oh, they liked it. It's a beautiful ceremony. Every parent should be, feel very fortunate that their uh, child is a devotee. It's very rare, and it's, uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Is your mother happy? What you like? My mother is beginning to understand Krishna consciousness through through association. <laughs> through, through, psychiatry, my, I would say. through my association, she can come to know Krishna. Well, let's, let's wait just a second, psychiatry. Now, if you go to a psychiatrist, <laughs> what does he do? He takes he, he sees that you're upset about being, say, attached to something. So he says, now look, we're going to take you and attach you to that because that's not acceptable by society or your wife or your friends or something or your lover. Then we put you over here. Now be attached to that, and you be attached to that. But your anxiety is still there. But what is happening in transcendental psychiatry, which is what we're doing, we're psychotherapists. What we do is we is we help a person fix their consciousness on a higher platform to Krishna, not just change it from set left right. to right. Now the people are crossing the streets in Chicago, in Pittsburgh, Detroit, L.A., San Francisco, and they yeah. see you. What would you like them to think? Because they think it's a very strange sight. Well, I mean, I I have passed you in New York and wondered. What the what? devil are they doing? Well, we want them to stop speculating on us and ask us what we're doing. That's our whole business. And then they say, maybe, you're cop-outs. Uh, well, we're actually not. We're drop-ins. We're, we're back in. <laughs> we're really in. This Hare Krishna movement is the in thing. And we're simply asking <laughs> that every intelligent person take a look at what we're saying. Not to say, oh, you're chanting Hare Krishna, but what's behind it? But we're not hippies. We're it? happy. Oh, okay. <laughs> do you want to sing your national anthem? Uh, do you want to do the thing? Sure. Because we're about to run out of time. All right, sure. Do you want to go into an uh, ecstasy? Oh, Here we go.